A massive crack in the ground that's estimated to be up to 50 feet deep has opened up in Kenya seemingly overnight. The crack is sort of shocking in its abruptness. You know, the rift is several miles long and some believe it is a sign the continent is splitting in two ever so slowly. In the heart of Africa, a monumental event is unfolding, stirring up mixed emotions among the local residents and igniting the curiosity of scientists around the world. The continent itself is cracking apart, a phenomenon that promises to reshape the very landscape as we know it. But that's not all. As the cracks deepen, an unprecedented deluge of flooding is expected to follow. And if that wasn't intriguing enough, this natural marvel is also predicted to give rise to a new ocean. How is this happening and what does it mean for the future of Africa and the world? Brace yourself as we unravel the mystery of how the African continent is breaking apart and the astounding consequences it will bring. A seismic shift is happening in Africa, with the continent itself undergoing a dramatic transformation that has both scientists and locals on the edge of their seats. The ground is cracking apart, threatening to split present-day Somalia and parts of Kenya, Ethiopia and Tanzania from the rest of the continent and giving rise to a startling possibility – the formation of a new ocean. Recently, a massive crack stretching across several kilometers unexpectedly appeared in southwestern Kenya, causing chaos as it caused a section of the nairobi narok motorway to collapse. Initially attributed to tectonic activity along the famous East African Rift, questions abound about why it formed in this particular location and whether it's connected to the ongoing geological process. Could it be the result of soft soil erosion filling an old fault? Or is it a harbinger of a larger scale event that will reshape Africa's geography forever? As we witness the Earth's ever-changing nature, with plate tectonics being just one example, this latest development of the African continent splitting in two has sparked new concerns and raised eyebrows among scientists and enthusiasts alike. The stage is set for a captivating tale of geographical metamorphosis a phenomenon that reminds us of the awe-inspiring forces at play on our ever-evolving planet. Beneath our feet lies a dynamic dance of colossal proportions. The Earth's lithosphere, comprised of the crust and upper mantle, is a mosaic of tectonic plates in constant motion. These mammoth plates, not content to stay still, glide and shift at varying speeds powered by mysterious forces yet to be fully understood. Convection currents swirling within the asthenosphere and formidable forces generated at the plate boundaries are believed to be at play, propelling these massive chunks of Earth's crust on an enigmatic journey. And nowhere is this geological drama more evident than in the East African Rift System, a colossal tear that spans over 3,000 kilometers from the Gulf of Aden to Zimbabwe, cleaving the African plate into two distinct parts, the Somali and the Nubian plates. The recent discovery of a massive crack in southwestern Kenya has unveiled the raw power of the eastern branch of the Rift Valley, a seismically active region that spans Ethiopia, Kenya and Tanzania. As the lithosphere stretches and thins under horizontal extensional forces, the stage is set for a breathtaking display of volcanic eruptions and seismic tremors, signalling the first act in the continental breakup. Could this be the birth of a new ocean basin, an epic event that will reshape our planet's geography and reveal more of its awe-inspiring mysteries? Only time will tell as we witness the Earth's lithosphere in constant motion. Millions of years ago, our planet underwent a breathtaking transformation, a celestial puzzle with continents shifting and merging like giant jigsaw pieces. The South Atlantic Ocean, a majestic body of water that spans vast distances today, was born from the dramatic breakup of South America and Africa around 138 million years ago. But this cosmic puzzle doesn't stop there. Let's take a step back in time around 300 million years ago when Earth had a solitary supercontinent called Pangaea, surrounded by a single ocean called Panthalassa. The evidence of this ancient world is imprinted in the geologic records, hidden clues left behind by our planet's awe-inspiring transformation. 
Pennsylvania coal deposits, for instance, share a striking resemblance in composition to coal deposits found in Poland, the United Kingdom and Germany from the same time period, hinting that North America and Europe were once part of a single colossal landmass, long before they became separate continents. But it's not just the rocks that tell the tale of our planet's past. The fossil record holds captivating secrets too. Identical plant species, such as the extinct seed fern Glossopteris, have been found in fossils across continents that are now worlds apart. The Appalachians in the United States and the Atlas Mountains in Morocco, Algeria and Tunisia, for instance, were once part of the central Pangaea Mountains, formed from the collision of the supercontinents Gondwana and Laurasia, a captivating piece of Earth's ancient history. And that's not all. Scientists have even unlocked the secrets of Earth's shifting magnetic poles through the orientation of magnetic minerals in geologic sediments, revealing a mesmerizing journey of how our planet's magnetic field has migrated over geologic time. The term Pangaea has its roots in the Greek word pan, meaning all, and Gaia, referring to Earth. This colossal supercontinent took shape over an incredibly long span of time, gradually evolving over hundreds of millions of years. As per a chapter in the scientific book Ancient Supercontinent and the Paleogeography of Earth, during the early Phanerozoic Eon, around 541 million years ago, almost all of the continents were located in the Southern Hemisphere. The largest among them was Gondwana, stretching from the South Pole to the Equator, while the Northern Hemisphere was dominated by the vast Panthalassic Ocean. Another ocean once existed between the ancient continents Laurentia, Baltica and Gondwana, but it began to close during the Ordovician period around 485 to 444 million years ago, ultimately disappearing during the Silurian period approximately 444 to 419 million years ago, when Baltica and Avalonia collided with Laurentia to form Laurasia. It wasn't until around 320 million years ago that Gondwana, Law Russia and the intervening terrains finally collided, giving rise to the grand supercontinent of Pangaea. However, contrary to the popular belief, Pangaea did not include all of the continents simultaneously. For instance, during the Carboniferous period, which spanned approximately 359 to 299 million years ago, the Paleotethys Ocean, to the east of Pangaea, remained wide and acted as a barrier between the supercontinent and several large independent Asian terrains, including Tarim, North China, South China and Indochina. As time progressed into the Permian period, lasting from 299 to 251 million years ago, many of the former Perigondwanan terrains drifted away from the northeast margin of Gondwana, leading to the opening of the Neotethys Ocean. The gradual breakup of Pangaea took place in several phases, occurring between 195 and 170 million years ago. It all started around 195 million years ago during the early Jurassic period when the Central Atlantic Ocean began to open up, marking the beginning of the end for the supercontinent. And in the ancient past, the supercontinent Gondwana cracked along familiar lines, splitting Africa, South America, Antarctica, India and Australia from Eurasia and North America. But the story didn't end there. Gondwana disintegrated further over millions of years, with continents shifting and separating. And even today, the continents are on the move, with Australia inching closer to Asia and Africa's eastern portion gradually breaking away. According to recent studies, supercontinents have risen and fallen throughout Earth's history, revealing a dynamic planet that's constantly changing. Scientists believe that the driving force behind this cycle is the mantle's circulation dynamics, but the details remain uncertain. While heat in the mantle is likely generated by radioactive decay, there's ongoing debate among scientists about whether the mantle has many pockets of heat flow or if it's one big heat conveyor belt. The process of continental rifting requires strong extensional forces to break the lithosphere, and the East African Rift is classified as an active rift with underlying mantle movement as the source of these stresses. A rise in mantle plume beneath this rift is causing the lithosphere to dome upwards, resulting in weakening, increased temperature, stretching and faulting. Geophysical data has unveiled a remarkable phenomenon known as the African superswell, 
a searing hot mantle plume that's not only responsible for the pull-apart forces driving Rift Valley formation, but also for the towering plateaus of southern and east Africa. From space, you can see the distinct topography of rifts, with fault-bounded depressions surrounded by elevated terrain, creating a breathtaking landscape. These fractures didn't all form at once, but rather in a sequence that started around 30 million years ago in northern Ethiopia and gradually spread towards Zimbabwe at a rate of 2.5 to 5 centimetres per year, like a slow-motion geological dance. What sets the East African Rift apart is that it offers a unique glimpse into different stages of rifting along its length. In the south, where the rift is still in its youthful stage, rates are low, faulting is widespread and volcanoes and earthquakes are rare. But as you move towards the Afar region, the entire rift valley floor is blanketed with volcanic rocks, indicating that the lithosphere has thinned almost to the point of complete breakup. It's as if the Earth's crust is being pulled apart at its seams, revealing its molten core. This process will eventually lead to the solidification of magma, forming new oceanic seafloor, and spreading will progress along the entire length of the Rift Valley over tens of millions of years. The result? The ocean will flood in, reshaping the African continent and creating a vast island in the Indian Ocean that will include parts of Ethiopia and Somalia, including the iconic Horn of Africa. Sometimes dramatic events like sudden faults that sever highways can create a sense of urgency when it comes to continental rifting. However, most of the time, the process of rifting is slow and gradual, often going unnoticed as Africa splits apart. But don't be fooled by its subtle nature, as the movement of plates, such as the Nubian and Somali plates, can still result in earthquakes by forming new faults, fissures and cracks, or by reactivating old ones. In East Africa, most of the seismic activity is spread across a wide zone along the rift, and the earthquakes are usually of relatively small magnitude. The presence of volcanism in the region is another visible sign of the ongoing process of continental breakup, showcasing the close proximity of the hot molten asthenosphere to the Earth's surface. Thanks to cutting-edge technology like GPS instruments, scientists have been able to revolutionise their research in recent years. These instruments allow them to make precise measurements of how the ground moves over time. According to one renowned geophysicist, GPS measurements can capture movement rates as small as a few millimetres per year. Imagine having the power of detailed satellite observations combined with on-ground field research to unlock the mysteries hidden beneath the Afar region. With cutting-edge technology and boots on the ground, scientists will gain unprecedented insights into the fascinating process of continental rifting. So what do you think will happen when Africa splits in two? Will it be a game changer for our planet's geography? Share your thoughts in the comments section below.